So Digital Green Project, right, we started in September 2006 uh, in the Technology for Emerging Markets group at Microsoft Research India. And we did the research initially for about nine months in the field, observing how the process kind of fits in within an existing extension system. Then for the last two years, a year and a half to two years, we've been doing a controlled evaluation of Digital Green with other forms of extension, including variations to the Digital Green system itself. Uh, and now we're at the phase that we have seen like this tenfold increase in the cost effectiveness of the extension systems that we partnered with to do the evaluation of digital beam. Now we're now moving into the phase that, well, beyond kind of publishing the papers, which we have, we're now starting to work with additional partners in other states. So over the last nine months, we've expanded our operations from beyond the first kind of controlled setting where we were working with Green Foundation in southern Karnataka. Mm -hmm. Now we're also working in other parts of Karnataka with another organization called BIF, uh, and then also working in Jharkhand and Orissa with an NGO called Pradhan. And both of these organizations are much larger compared to Green Foundation. Green Foundation is a relatively small NGO, while BIF actually operates in 12 states, 12,000 villages, and Pradhan works in about six states and about 6,000 villages today. Uh, so that right now we're kind of just uh, trying to understand the context of each of these different extension operations because they vary, right, both kind of organizationally as well as in the local context in which they're operating. Uh, and so to now get to the next phase, which is what we want to expand digital green so that more partners and ultimately more farmers can benefit from, from its process, uh, we're now separating from Microsoft Research into an independent uh, charitable trust in India as well as a 501c3 nonprofit in the States. Uh, and so this kind of is necessary because Microsoft Research has its research objectives, much like an academic institution. And so once you know, we've shown something at pilot scale, now to take it to the next kind of much wider scale, this is something that Microsoft is a corporate entity, obviously responsible to our shareholders, while we want to be more responsible to the farmers, so. Definitely, like, as Digital Green works with different partners in different locations, there are different constraints and, and also opportunities that we find. So, for example, like, now that we're working in a place like in Jharkhand, compared to Karnataka, the socioeconomic conditions, infrastructure availability is extremely poor. Uh, there's very little grid connectivity, very poor road infrastructure in place. So then doing things like having these TVs, DVD players out there before, you know, <coughs> even in Karnataka it's not like it has perfect grid coverage. Of course there's going to be power outages all the time. But at the still same time we didn't have to deal with kind of batteries. We could rely on just connecting to the grid whenever it was available. Usually it came in after 6 p.m. So that was the prime time when we do our video screenings as it is. So we didn't have to worry too much about power issues, but now working in Jharkhand, we are kind of looking at alternatives, including, you know, the first simple solution is just using still the TV and DVD player added to like a battery backup kind of facility, but also looking at more portable kind of options. Uh, and we've experimented with variations to digital green using different types of media like uh, audio, so audio only across uh, just standard MP3 players, ripping the video. Uh, audio tracks in, as mp3s, loading them onto standard mp3 players connected to external speakers. This is obviously very portable. Batteries are just like the standard AA batteries, uh, so there's no real problems and in terms of dust and this rain and, and water kind of issues that you might experience, right, especially in a place like Jharkhand. This is, we found in like also in our controlled evaluation, we compared audio green uh, in comparison to, say, this video-based traditional digital green model. And we found that uh, it's substantially better than the classical system, though slightly reduced than the, the video-based digital green, right? Because you're not able to show, like, these visuals, which is very pretty important, especially in an agricultural profession and for these visually oriented types of peoples. But at the same time, we've also found these opportunities uh, for different partners have different strengths, right? So, for example, Pradhan, which works also in Jharkhand, they have a, a high focus on really building and bringing empowerment amongst the community through institutions like self-help groups and then doing things like microfinance-based activities through these self-help groups and then adding on these layers like livelihood and non-livelihood-based interventions on top of that. 
and then bringing together these multiple self-help groups all together into farmer federations or producer companies so that they can do things like aggregate inputs as well as aggregate outputs for taking to market. And so Digital Green essentially builds on the foundation that's been laid by our partners. So in the case of Pradhan, because they've built this capacity inbuilt within the village communities for doing things like content production, in the Green Foundation case, they didn't really focus so much on that. So in terms of the video production, the emphasis was more on the professional staff of the NGO who are the ones actually going out to the field, manning the cameras, deciding what topics to feature, and, and really just uh, maybe taking full control. Those, of course, the main feature in those videos was always the farmer. But in the case of Pradhan, the difference is that now, because there's a lot of these community resource people within the communities, often of these self-help groups, members themselves, that with just a basic level of training on like the technical as well as creative aspects of video production, these guys can go out to the field themselves uh, and still come to come back and like review these videos with the professional staff of Pradhan after after they come back and they can make sure that the quality of the content is there uh, and that, you know, what are the next steps so that we can improve uh, the next of the videos. But That's right, but it, it kind of depends on the level of capacity that's already been built within the communities, right? So in the Green Foundation case, it's not like we can go immediately to the community and expect that they'll be able to have the technical competency in the agricultural practices and technologies that are going to be useful, as well as the kind of communication ability, which is going to be important when you're producing a video. Uh, you know, over the course of the time, they are also working on that aspect to build that capacity within their communities. But Pradhan, for example, has already done that in a lot of areas in Jharkhand. So we can build on top of that and kind of use those community resources to make this even more participatory, right? That's the main objective, is that over the course of time, that you know, ensuring you know, quality at the same time of involving the community to a higher degree. Very true. Well, so, so Digital Green's like, main play is, uh, is basically improving the cost effectiveness of existing extension systems, right? So we don't say that we have the agricultural expertise in, in a lot of ways, right? We are kind of providing this platform for existing people-based extension systems to amplify their effectiveness and connect with more farmers. Uh, but kind of longer term, you know, the main objective for Digital Green is really ultimately affecting these farmers' livelihoods, right? So, you know, there's one thing about improving the cost of effectiveness of our partners, but what is the cost, what is the effectiveness side of that kind of equation is, is really on the livelihoods of the farmers, right? So, uh, and, and longer term, as we kind of expand, you know, today we're, we have these pilot operations with these small set of partners in different locations. Uh, where we're basically trying to understand the operations of our partner to see how does digital green integrate within that context as well as that local community in which they're working. But once we have this kind of learning established, then we can create sort of more standard operating procedures, right, for training our partners so that, you know, for example, BIFE, which works in 12 states and 12,000 villages, then they can replicate within their organization that much more easier, right? Of course, there's still going to be some time lag of, you know, just basic human capacity building that's required, but uh, it'll be that much more simplified.